connection it says i am live now hi everybody well nobody on here just yet but you got know ig is letting you guys know that we are on um it's our <laughs> latest edition of the comments with my guy dex and i see him on here hold on let's get you dex there we go all right, I see people coming in. True Gemini. Hey, everybody. Y'all come on. Have a seat. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, Dax. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm showing y'all booby and shit. Hold up. I'm just trying to adjust me a little more. Hi. I don't know why I'm having all the technical. This whole damn day has been a technical difficulty. Let's just say that. I don't want to say this out loud because I hate when people say it, but I bet you Mercury is doing its thing. You know what, Dex? It's so funny because I was, you know, I'm, I'm kind of into that stuff. <laughs> um, so I was reading somewhere where it, it mentioned Mercury and I said, here come this bitch again. I, I, this week, and I'm like, it's only Tuesday. What, what's happening? Is, what, what's happening? <laughs> my sister-in-law sends us like a message every morning, like a good morning message, which I think is so cool. And she sends one, right? And she sent one today and I was like, happy wednesday and she's like it's not hump day and i was like yes it is she's like no it's not I'm like no today can't be tuesday <laughs> today can't be tuesday <laughs> tuesday is like my busy day like in general yeah. i do so much on tuesdays and it, it's just work just doesn't help it <laughs> <laughs> it's busy days and it has nothing to do with work <laughs> yes what well, shit mine was everything to do with work but today i was going through up and down with emotions as you guys see i got my bourbon today because i have no wine left and i have to have a drinky drink of something but <laughs> yes. uh, you said you have to yeah 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 <laughs> interesting <laughs> yeah so it has been one of those days the drinks are needed hi chill they're my bestie hi honey um the drinks are the drink is needed and tomorrow's a new day and a brighter day at that so when that's I, when, where I, when i closed my laptop today i was just like don't worry about it it's over deal with it tomorrow and that's just like the mindset right now Yes. And it's so funny that I don't know about you because I know we get so caught up in working with the days and it's actually kind of rare, especially working from home that I actually do stop and take a break. No, I don't do that all day. It should kind of straight through. Like I don't yeah. break. I just, I work straight through it. Today was one of those days. I said, oh, F that. I literally, which rarely happens. Hey, seven girl baby, uh, which rarely happens once I started getting crazy i said put this laptop down yeah. and you're going to worry about the problems that are within your pay grade <laughs> yeah, today it's weird because i i usually am very specific about like what i eat during the week like I, I just try not to like go out and stuff like that during the week tonight i'm like i'm going to get crab legs when i finish the show like i have yeah. to, I, I i yeah i j today was a lot I feel like go get your crab legs, sweetie. I'm also the, just to get into the weekend. You had some weekend beef with me. Why is that, Dexter? Explain. And, and I just want to be very clear that it's not weekend beef. Like, we have a beef currently. Like, we're still beefing. Okay. Spill. So, guys, a couple weeks ago, my wife was out of town. And, like, I told my associate that, like, she was out of town. <laughs> and I needed <laughs> things to do or whatever. Like, I have nothing to do. And the next thing I noticed, she was, at this point, I don't even remember what it was, but she had went out or something. Oh, she did a run. And I was like, I run sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, okay. So then I was like, okay, well, that's strike one, but I'm going to leave it alone. Then this so weekend, she was out. I don't know what she was doing the one time. God. I'm like, okay, why didn't, wasn't, I? she went for a hike. The day before, I'm like, oh, let's go for a hike. She's like, you know, I'm down. The very next day she went for a hike with somebody else. I was like, oh, strike two. Then that same day, later on that evening, she went to the carnival. I didn't know the carnival was here. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. 
Okay, so can I go back and give my insight on how things went down? Hey, SoCal Karen, baby, how you doing? Um, so I'll give it to you that the first Saturday when I went to walk for a benefit, um, Dex was like, oh, why wasn't I invited? I said, it wasn't, it wasn't no crab legs there. <laughs> and it doesn't help that today I'm like, I'm going to go get crab legs. Like, it really doesn't help. <laughs> And when it came to this, so yes, Dexter did say, hey, guys, you want to go um, hiking? Yes. Now, Dexter knows damn well that if, if, if the weather is good, that's nine times out of ten what I'm going to do on Saturday mornings. So I knew he was trolling at that point. The next day, I posted my pictures and my stories was with my girl, Tam. Hey, Tam, he going to send the, the mean face emojis. I, I was said... <laughs> I said, sweetie, again, there are no crab legs nor oxtails here. Yo, when I, so when I go to the, the to the hike that has the oxtails and or crab legs, I got you. When you wrote oxtails, I'm like, so all you think I do is eat? <laughs> <laughs> and then what, when, eat and drink your gallons. Yeah. I, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and then you went to the carnival. The carnival really set me up because I'm like, I didn't even know they still did carnivals in the United States. Like, I thought that I thought that was a thing in the past. No, they do, which is so weird. I had to make myself go because after that damn hike, Dexter, I ain't even gonna hold you. I was like, get, and I don't know why. Maybe I just did one. I've been doing them consistently, but I haven't been feeling good today at all either way. And I think Friday just, I mean Saturday, kind of kicked that off, but. Do what? Shit, this one just say I'm out. What did I just say? Shit. Like the hike, like how you weren't, you did the hike, but you weren't sure that you were going to, you had to make, force yourself to go to the carnival. Yes, to the carnival, because I was just, I was dead to the world. And I was like, I don't know what's going on. Like, no, I've hiked before and then had energy to do other stuff. But with that said, I am so happy that I got up and went because I made it like one of my things. I have to start creating boundaries and creating like time for family and doing things because we all get so caught up in work um, and just like the day, the day of life. Sometimes I'm trying, I'm working on trying to not let the not allowing the tiredness take my life over that's because you like for a weekend you get two days and really it's like a day and half a day really because like by yes. Saturday, you're thinking about the next week and and like that is something that i've been very like in, like oh, i'm drawing a blank intentional very intentional <laughs> And like, like, <laughs> I've done this thing now where like, there's people that I'm really close to, and I haven't like talked to them in a minute, and like, and mm -hmm. I mean, and like, I'll text people, but I mean, like, hung out with them and see them. So like, I'm sorry, I'm go ahead. My friends and I'm like, what are you doing Friday? What are you doing Saturday? Let's let's go to brunch. And I've been doing that consistently, and Good. I'm thinking it makes such a difference. Obviously, in my friendships because I'm seeing the people, but but more importantly, honestly, to me because I'm actually getting up and being active and doing something. Because mm -hmm. we both know it is so easy to just and, that, and not do a damn thing. There's nothing wrong with that either. Because I yeah. do that as well. Like I'll have these these days or these hours where I'm like, I'm not going to do anything but play my PlayStation. Like that's all I'm mm -hmm. for like the next three hours. And like I do that and it's like time because like right now, Monday through Friday, I can't do that. So it's mm -hmm. that opportunity to just sit down and do nothing. And that is, yes. it is very good for your so yeah. the, the recovery to be able because people are so and we'll get into that people are so in the state of go 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 that you get lost your your body literally needs a break like your brain needs a break to to in order in order to work effectively yeah. so sometimes like i know for me right now and i kept saying that which was this Sundays are my days to detach, detach from everything. I don't like to even, unless I have a meeting scheduled or something, that's the only time I'll go out on Sundays now. But for the most part, I use that entire day as my recuperation day. And I try to stay off the internet, which normally I'm successful. But this Saturday, it was like a lot of angst and my body was feeling weird, all this weird energy going through it. 
I was like, girl, what is going on? So, but yeah, that 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 energy still lingers, and today is a, is another day. <laughs> My favorite thing to do on Sundays now, and this is fairly new for me too. Like I love going to church on Sundays, like physically going to church on a Sunday. Now, okay. if my church service is only two hours, but I feel like it takes up a very large chunk of the day. But just that spiritual wholeness that I get from going to it, like I really think it has changed my life in such a short amount of time too. Like Child. going to church and stuff like that. But like college, after college, it definitely church was like not something that was on my mind like, at mm -mm. all. Now that I'm older. And I feel like I can enjoy the message a little bit more. I need the message a little bit more. And you understand the message. Yes, I am. I love going to church. You know what's funny, Dexter, that you say that? I noticed that's something about me. I mean, I feel like we both, and so many people in the world right now are building on their spirituality and, you know, emotional, uh, you know, just in a space of trying to find themselves and who they are in the world. Um we ain't going to do this all show. You Why keep saying, my <laughs> you're both on the same thing. And you notice there are a lot of people in our age group that are finding themselves and, and connecting back to spirituality. Yeah. <laughs> so I notice even with me, like I, every morning I wake up, I'll probably start my day at about 6 a.m., but still laying in the bed, but I'm putting on positive affirmations. I've listened to a lot of, um, scriptures. I listen to a lot of um, spiritual um, uh, music. So I really feel like since I've been doing that, and it's just little ways to develop your own um, spirituality and your relationship with God. But I feel like since I have been doing it, Dexter, like even your perspective of life yes. really does change. And I said, I wonder, and I'll find myself on a regular, like not even Sunday on a regular, I'm listening to like gospel music all the time. I said, have I finally hit that age to yeah. where? <laughs> and you know what's crazy though? Like this is something that's so wild to me. I can't even believe I'm saying this out loud. I'm, I'm not saying that I had the Holy Ghost. I'm not, that's not what it was. Okay. However, <laughs> I had a moment in the last time I was at church. I had like this moment where I'm like, something is making me stand up. And it's not me. Like my oh. body is moving and I can't control it. And like, I'm like, like how it's happening right now. Like my body is really like doing stuff that I can't control. And I'm clapping and stuff like that. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. But my body's a spirit. <laughs> <laughs> like it, I, when people, I remember being younger, my mom would do that. I'd be like, you have to sit down. You're so embarrassed. You're so embarrassed. Like, oh my God. <laughs> That was me. <laughs> it was me. I was like, oh my God, my hands are clapping. <laughs> I was like, where, when does the switch happen? Like, I just, like, who is this person? I'm happy with her. But who is this person? Very odd, because this was never me, too. Like, usually before, and I was younger, obviously, but, like, not that young. Young and older, mm -hmm. no better. But usually, like, when it comes down to the offering, I'm like, oh, I can give $10. Now I'd be like, Oh, I can get some real money. <laughs> I can I can get some money to church. And it's like it doesn't bother me. It's it, first off, the church has a cash up now. That is dangerous because you be feeling compelled by the spirit and like move to, to donate and stuff like that. And I, for whatever reason, you know when it comes to cash up. I just don't care. Like I yeah. give money on cash up and like in my head it's like not real money. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't know why. You you must why? be paying people with cash app and with monopoly money. That's what it is. <laughs> Cash App really is monopoly money. I go like, if I see somebody post something about Cash App, I do it. I just I don't know why. And then I would be in church, I would be moved by the spirit. They be they put the Cash App up. I'm like, cool, how much you need? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm gonna hold you when it comes to the Cash App and the times. I will say because with my church, I'd be like, I ain't been here in a while. Let me. I'm still here. Let me give you all these times. <laughs> Like God, well, and then you say God knows my heart. I'm sorry, ain't there, but you be tuning in on Sundays. What's, it's virtual. What's the issue, sweetie? Now I will say during like the virtual set, like I, it's hard for me to connect with virtual sessions though. Like it's not the, it's not it's yeah. virtually, but like in person, like it is. Honestly, church is probably the only thing that I miss in person. Wow. Yeah, like I mean, like I've gone to like dinners and stuff like that in person. I've done mm -hmm. the half hours in person, and I don't. I, I'm not that I didn't. I mean, I was kind of doing them during the pandemic too. Like here and there, well, I was mm -hmm. to do a happy hour, but I wasn't going to church. And then, like now, being back in there, it's I like it. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Dex. Um, before we get into it a bit more, I just wanted to shout out to my little brother. 
um, Latif Charleston. It, his, well, his birthday is on the 6th, May 6th. So I just wanted to say happy birthday to my beautiful brother. I don't um, know. I don't, I, I, it's weird when you, there's certain brothers of yours, two of them specifically, that when you say little brother, I have to give you the side eye because I'm like, okay. Little yes, they're, they're all younger than me. I am that old ass woman. I'm the leading the church and all of that stuff. I, it, Latif is like all the way up there. Like you have to look up to like see his face. And like I don't know, him and Randy just don't seem like younger brothers. They're like old. They're like your age or older. Are you trying to call my brothers old men? <laughs> no. Like you guys just to me it just seems like we I don't know. Like you guys, you have to see when she posts a picture of them. Like they don't look like younger brothers. No, nah, I feel you. I don't know. I guess we maybe because we all kind of look like the same age, so to speak. Except my brother Savion, who's right here, who's still damn near a baby, so we don't look the same age at all. Savion, I understand. Christian, I get it. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. You've never met Dante, though. You've never met my brother Dante. Dante the one. Dante don't play. <laughs> That's my brother who will, okay. Yeah, like, sis, sis, I mean, all of them will, for the most part. Yeah. Actually, all of them, if I had a problem. But my brother, Dot, that's the one on go. Like, <laughs> you know, that's, that's don't know there's a problem before there's a problem, before I even know there's a problem. He'll be like, sis, he's the I need to do something. He's the one that you don't call when there's an issue. Yes, <laughs> and let's say that you because if I call Dante, it's, it's a problem. It, it's over. Look at Savion in here talking about don't even toy. <laughs> if, listen, if you got words with me and Dante pull up, you want to watch. You want to watch your damn mouth. That's <laughs> just that it just leave the area because Dante smack ain't the one. <laughs> None of my siblings are like that. Like we're not like those people. Like if there's like an issue, don't uh huh. Talk to me for. <laughs> like, like what, what's that about i have my friends are more like that i have some friends that are like like that but my siblings and myself we're not like we're not like that it's so funny that you so part of it a lot of times i don't think you'll know what it if they're really like that until the situation presents itself no, like that your mom is yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really know until it happened i think me my brothers i knew they was like riders for the most part a few years ago we had a family uh scuffle at the uh at thanksgiving what okay i need to, okay let's 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 get into this i need the details <laughs> like and what do you and I'm, like i know you when this happened yeah. Wait, maybe two thousand when we met. No, you did not. This damn. That's how long ago it was. Cause it definitely happened while I was at my. It's so funny how you pinpoint things by what job you've had. So it definitely happened while I am employed where I am now, and it was early on. So no, I I didn't know you. Then, but... You tell me. Okay, let's hear. It. Let's hear. It. Nothing. Okay, hold on. Look, if my if any of the other brothers over here, they're gonna be like, "Yo, why are you doing that, yo?" <laughs> well, we had a family situation. Um, an ex of mine was involved. It was due to some just situations going on. A situation that had happened, and the ex had every reason to be upset about it. Okay. So that an inter an altercation that happened between him and one of my little brothers. So our first get together since the altercation had gone down was Thanksgiving. I didn't realize that my ex and my brother hadn't spoken at that time. Next minute I knew they were talking and the ex put hands on my brother. In front of everybody else? Uh-huh. Actually, we were outside at the time because we were looking at something. But when I tell you when that shit happened, it was like instant. The siblings gathered and just started attacking. What did you like? What were you doing? Choking out somebody. <laughs> Wait, you if I do? Yes, because that's what you do when shit pop off, and at the moment's end, that you just handle business. No, 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 no. You. You specifically in this situation kind of have to break it up because you have somebody on both sides. Like you have, I did break it up. 
Oh yeah, with your hands across across somebody's neck. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever means necessary, you gotta go straight. Did the ex get jumped? <laughs> uh, uh, clearly. <laughs> Wait, Allie Kipper said tonight is a short rib night. Oh, that sounds amazing. Now, Allie Kipper. That sounds amazing, actually. <laughs> Allie Kipper. Now, I, now I've been told him. You gonna come up on here and tell us these damn recipes and everything? Where's the plate? Where is it? No, seriously, that sounds incredible. <laughs> like sure. Him and Trey, you know they the ones. They stay cooking and don't offer nobody no damn plates. And Allie Kipper is from Philly. Look at me putting all his business <laughs> oh, yeah, like that. He cooks like really well and will like cook something, and it's just like. Why did you send this to the group chat? Like, come to my house. Like, what is happening here? Like, and you know what? I blocked people for that back in the day. I remember. <laughs> but these people are my friends because at least they give like some type of context. This one girl that I used to know, I used to work with her. And you know, you don't keep in touch, but you see each other on social media. So she started really getting into cooking, and that was amazing. I think eventually she even opened up her own restaurant. Mm -hmm. But I used to get so sick of. She would post, oh, on the menu, this, this, and that, drink made by this. What y'all eating? Stop asking me what the fuck I'm eating. Bye. <laughs> what so, the food? I get so sensitive. <laughs> she did that on social media, though. My friend will text me directly, like, what he's cooking. And I'm just like, are, like, are you coming over with something? Like, I don't, what's happening? Like, why would I care? Like, and it'd just be looking amazing. And you know what's crazy to not think about it? I do the same thing. I do that, but my food don't be looking amazing. My food just looks like, it's like, I just be showing like, oh, look, I made this. You can only do stuff like that <clears throat> if your food looks okay. If you know you're a throwing down in the kitchen, don't send nobody your food. That's disrespectful. Because exactly, we be sitting up there like, I'm hungry as shit. And or you be looking at the mine. I ain't got none of that good stuff. So what's up with it? Look at the plate that you made and you'd be like, okay. <laughs> That's how I be. All right, let's get into some local news. Shit, normally I write the time down. I don't even know what time we started. I want to uh, say it was 546. Let me write that down so I can just keep track of the time. Um, so some local news. Have you guys heard if you're in the Delaware County area, be on the lookout for um, Yogi the Bear? Excuse me? Yogi the Bear, I won't, wait, Allie Kipper said I won't because y'all would be cussing me out if I posted the photos. Good, and don't, unless you, you better post a damn photo with a damn address, Allie Kipper. <laughs> um, all right, we're going back to it next. What the hell did I say? Oh, the bear. It's been spotted right now. So it's for a few days, it's kind of been on the loose. It's all been in the Delaware County area. Right now, it is in Drexel Hill, the last that I saw really? on this. Drexel. They were able to tranquilize the bear, and you see the bear just, like, chilling. Last update that I got on it before we went home, they were waiting for waiting for the bear to snap out of his drugged out haze. Uh -huh. And they have jelly donuts waiting <laughs> and a bear trap for him so they can scoop him up and take him back to where he's supposed to be. I but know, where is that? Looking, I'm looking at the story and I did not know that. That is so cool. You know, I lived in Drexel Hill, so that is so cool to me. Yes, so it's just chilling. So guys, if you are in the Delaware County area, because I don't know if, they're, if they've caught it yet or not, just be on the lookout. Don't have your pets out just roaming. Watch your back when you walk outside the house. But the thing that kills me when it comes to shit like this, the bear's in a wooded area. Yes. Well, technically, y'all in his house. <laughs> and also, the craziest part about this, it says police are urging people to keep their distance if they see it. There are some things I don't feel like you need to tell people. You don't. But you I guess some people... Walk up, this bear, walk up on him. Yeah. Well, you know, Pennsylvania is the home of, and it's actually close by, of, of, of Jackass, the, yeah. the, the series. So... I, being that there's a lot of that legacy runs very deep here, so I'm sure we have some adventure seekers who would go out there to probably going to go and, I got the honey. <laughs> <laughs> I 
It also you said that, that fucking bear if you want to. It said that police or crews, and I'm not sure who the crews is, um, but the crews, they tranquilized the bear and lost him. How do you lose something that you... It's not like it's a skinny bear. How do you lose something that you tranquilize? Y'all done. Because the bear know the woods better than we do. <laughs> but the bear was tranquilized. So why did you just... Y'all was scared. Like, why you pick it up and put it in the car? Why he was tranquilized? You remember that? Pick it up. Over. Remember in the hangover when they tranquilized that uh, tiger and then they put him in a car and fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so that's basically their fault, the reason why the bear is out here. Because once you got him down, y'all should have just went and go pick him up. Could you but you didn't. Could you walking out your house and seeing the bear like checking the mail? <laughs> No, but have you seen those videos of the bear? There was one I saw, which I'd have been pissed off because the, uh, it looked like they lived in like the mountains somewhere, a wooded area. The people were not home, so I'm assuming it was a vacation home. Mm -hmm. That bear was disrespectful as shit. I had to take your ass out the way you busted through my damn door like you pay some motherfucking rent here. <laughs> I know, sir. I know, Yogi, you ain't bring your ass up in here and gonna knock my mother's door off the hinges. And he ain't got no money to pay for it. And, but the, the, it's like, it's kind of like Shrek. Like, remember Shrek was in, like, the swamp or whatever. So when people come in the swamp, people, like, do things to them. It's kind of like the same thing. It's like, you don't belong here. I do. So whatever happens <laughs> exactly. in, in, in my area. That 0417, hey, baby, she said hello to us. Um, yeah, it's just, I always find it weird. I'm glad they at least are talking about, um, you know, at least trying to or capture him and take him to a good home or take him back into the wild. I think I really hate when, like, they'll say the animal, like, went crazy, so we got to put it down. Fuck you mean? The motherfucking lion and the bear was being a lion, tiger, and bear. You're the crazy one for trying to make them do shit that they ain't supposed to be doing. Y'all be going to those circuses looking at them. <laughs> hey, Ron Divas. The element said, enough is enough. Absolutely. Hey, y'all want to put them up? Y'all try to put the elephant down? I don't see the elephant as being the issue here. I see the circus owner as being the issue or whatever the case may be. Oh, and speaking of on the loose, though, and local news, Colin has made a new appearance and is trying to kill him. I can't take it. Like, Literally. I go outside for like five minutes, and I come back, my body is itching, my nose is it, I, What is happening? Child, one of my uh, girlfriends, I saw her yesterday. She has to go for a new allergy test, so she can't take allergy medication for a week. When I tell you I saw her ass yesterday and she came over looking like, like, Bane, like, girl, what the hell is going on? Yeah. Like, where's the mess? <laughs> this, and you know what? I was reading a while back. I think, I don't want to say it's the worst or it could be the worst, but Pennsylvania is definitely, I want to say, top three of the worst places to live. If you have allergies, feels like, and 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 I think it's new this year too because I didn't experience this last year at all. Like this is well, you know, each season, it, 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 and that's why I actually was talking to her yesterday. I kind of want to go get an allergy test because each season it won't it won't affect you because it depends on what is blooming or I guess what is pollinating at the time. Yeah. So whatever is in the atmosphere on that season, like some allergy seasons, I don't have no issues whatsoever. But then others, I'm like, bitch, I'm about to die. Yes. Somebody help me. In here, I've been scratching the back of my throat. Like, it is insane. Like, I hate this. Allie Kipper said his window fan turned yellow from the pollen. I feel y'all. And it's so funny because I'll have to open my windows. I'm just a, a proponent of, like, natural air. But it's just, like, airing the damn apartment out. But and this is, and right, right now, it's open. Watch a bitch going to be paying later. No. I think it's. You know what might help allergies? Bourbon. No, it don't. Because Cause since I've had this bourbon, I ain't had no issues. Okay, well, maybe I should take some. <laughs> <laughs> question, though, this is, this is why, like, nights, like, on Tuesday nights, like, I, is, like, the only, outside of Friday, Saturday, Sunday, is the only night that I would actually drink something, like, liquor or whatever, but, like, I don't take allergy pills if I know I'm going to drink. I just feel like you're not supposed to mix them. Is that a thing, or did I make that up? I think you made that up. I think you should be fine. But I'm not a doctor, so. 
I'm like, Go rock on, player. Live your best life. What do you got? I hope you don't die. If you take allergy medicine, can you drink liquor? Specifically Patron. Happens it stopped you before? <laughs> no, it does because I'm like one of those people. I'm like, if, like it's one, it's one or the other. Either you're going to drink the liquor or you're going to take the allergy pill. Sometimes I'd be like, I'm going to have to, <laughs> it's going to have to be what it's going to be. It's got to be. So Lillian McCaskill said, uh, they say eat local honey to help with allergies. I have heard that, but how the fuck we know if the local the honey is local? Uh, well, I guess you have to go to an actual bee farm you, to make sure it's locally sourced. I tell you this, though, the honey I be eating, it ain't local honey. Because, like, I realized when I went to Trader Joe's recently, right, and <laughs> I the honey that I get it's like this jar and it's like a bear and it's like okay. whatever. When I went to Trader Joe's, I saw this thing was like raw organic honey. I was like, oh, mine don't look like that. <laughs> mine was it wasn't hard. Like it was, it was actually yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's unfiltered honey. I said, oh, so that's a difference. Yeah, that's actually the best honey to get. You really want the the raw and unfiltered so it should be you know how most honey you pour like you can take and squeeze the bottle and pour no that shit should be solid to where you go ahead and grab a spoon to scoop it out and put it in whatever you're putting it in EC it's sold at your area farmers market and health food stores yes ec mclean said it's going to be a fortune it's only going to be a fortune if they don't sell it at walmart if you catch my drift <laughs> You know what? Else? Yeah. You know what else is a fortune, though. Um, what allergy pills? Allergy pills are very expensive. Oh, I got the hookup. How they hear me? Oh, damn! I can't tell everybody on here because y'all gonna go get it. Okay. <laughs> uh, you got the hookup to allergy pills? I found it off of like by way of. So I was in the Acme recently. So normally the allergy medication I need is the um, the Claritin 24-hour release one, the Claritin D 24-hour release. So normally I'm so used to paying, all right, here's this 20, just take it, 20 for like a 10-pack or even a 5-pack. Child, while I go, somebody said, I had took allergy pills and about 15 minutes later I smoked and got scared, but I was okay, but it was a good high. No, Enjoy yourself. But, I, but I'd be scared to just take like a drink. Or, I don't know. I I don't know. But um, but no. So if so, they she was like, oh, we don't have the one that you want. We only have the store brought one. And I was like, the store brought one is fine. Like one is fine because I'm all about the active ingredients. When she rang me up, she said seven dollars. I said what? She might have. You sure you got the price right on that? Because I ain't never in my life got a 10-pack of even the, uh, uh, what do they call it? It's not the actual, it's the store brand. Yes. Yeah, so it's the store brand, and it was the same amount. I want to say it was 10 of them. That's damn near unheard of. So, guys, if you ever need the Claritin D store brand version and you want to be pleasantly surprised by not paying an arm and a leg for pills... <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Black Joe Showman, generic. Shoot up to Acme. Yes, Ali Kipper. It was like seven dollars. I was so confused. I, the girl looked at me. I stopped because I felt like I was getting away with robbery. Yeah, I <laughs> like, oh, check that again. I use Zyrtec. And you know what's crazy about Zyrtec, though? It's expensive. But I lied to you not. If I put a Zyrtec, and it could be mind games, I don't know. But when I put a Zyrtec in my body, instantly. No issue. Like it, 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 it works right away. Benadryl takes a while, but Zyrtec, you put Zyrtec in there, and I just be like, what allergies? Yeah, I, I don't think I tried Zyrtec, but Sudafed does nothing for me. Benadryl that only helps me at night, and it, it helps me sleep too. But for the most part, I am a a either generic brand or regular brand Claritin D twenty four hour release. I don't do it on purpose. I forgot I had taken my allergy pills, but my pills were doctor prescribed. So, you know, that high was great. <laughs> I don't want to get high up of allergy pills. I don't want that. <laughs> oh, you know, that's what they, you know the, 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 the upper echelon type people, you know, they say, you, we don't eat, you have a nice little pill oh, with a glass of wine or, or, or a glass of champagne. What you need food for? I'm good on that. I want to eat specifically crab legs. <laughs> 
What you think food for, sweetie? It's up here. And you know how you hear them here, but it's the same people. Certain weddings you go to where it's like, certain weddings I've been to, a lot of times the food has been trash, but them liquor is flowing. Well, that's like my- top shelf good liquor. Don't be the weddings where they'd be like, you don't need to eat, get your little pill. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what you're here for. <laughs> You're here to have a good time. Get you this little pill and, and have this open bar and have a good time. Have a good time. <laughs> and move. <laughs> so All right. the big story that I think everyone's talking about today is the overturning potentially of Roe v. Wade. I have some theories on that. What do you think? As a woman. As a woman okay, I'm gonna take womanhood out of it because whenever this becomes That's a what thing. Part, though. It is, but I'm suspect. I feel like we're in a wag the dog type situation because let's be clear. We here. We here. Thank you. Same page. Thank you. So let's be clear. And then that was because, of course, when I first saw it, I said, this is ridiculous. But then I started having more like doing more just research and listening to what people were saying. Apparently, drafts like this get drawn up all of the time. Yes. This is not an uncommon thing. I understand we are close to an election. It's just very suspect (laughs) that this comes out at this time, knowing that this is is a commonality that that happens. Now, it's giving wag the dog and I'm not here for that. We're on the same page here. So for me, I look at it like I've been very public about saying, I'm not going to vote. I'm not voting anymore. I'm done with it. I've been very vocal about that. And I'm not the only person that's been vocal about that. A lot of people have been very, specifically, people say, I say, not only am I never voting again, but I'm not voting for a Democrat. I'm not doing that. It makes no sense for me to vote for a Democrat. It's stupid, right? Mm-hmm. So for any Republican, this feels like this is why this feels like a game to me. Like it feels like a joke almost. If I'm telling you, multiple people are telling you, and kind of showing you that we're not going to vote anymore. Like we're not doing it. We're finishing. We're done with it. Right? We're mm-hmm. saying this, whatever. If I'm a Republican, I would assume that I would shut up and sit down and eat my food and let the Democrats self destruct. Correct? Because like. <laughs> If you think about it, this is what the Democrats did in the last election when Donald Trump was like, don't go out there and vote. Republicans did not vote. They just didn't do it. And mm-hmm. they lost. So if, if I'm saying I'm not going to vote, I'm not going to vote, I'm not going to vote. If I'm if, and the Republican lawmakers are looking, they're like, make sure this bill gets put out there. Why would you even ruffle feathers for people like me to be like, I don't like this. I got to go vote. If y'all do this, I'm voting. Why would you do that? Y'all kind of had this election in the bag. Mm-hmm. And so when I really came up with this, I was like, wait a second. Joe Biden's all a bit, hasn't even been in office for a full year, really, at this point. Thank like, you. This is his first term, like first term, first year of the first term. We have three more years of this man. It's not 2024 yet. Why would you not let the Democrats self-destruct themselves? Why would you put this out there? Why would you allow this to be information that's out there? And I'm like, if this is true and they do this, I'm n- I'm going to vote. Listen. <laughs> I went from not voting, but I'm like, I'm a vote now if you do this. Like, you should have just shut up. Like, be, mm-hmm. why would you do this? Thank you. Well, somebody in here just said, uh, Ron Diva said, they're saying that uh, Clarence Thomas's wife dropped the leap to Politico about the abortion story. Well, you- So I think that correlates to your the way you see it, Dex. It makes no sense. Thank you. I want you to put that out there. Like, but you remember though, she was under fire. Jenny is her name, or Jenny, or something like that. Jenny, yeah. But it, it's used to go with a G, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yes. Well, it's Jenny. So you anyway, can't trust them anyway. <laughs> you spelled it wrong. <laughs> so anyway, she. I can believe that she would put that out there because the last headline that came out about her was that she was trying to do stuff, encourage people to do stuff when it came to January 6th. So you probably trying to take the pressure off of your, you're going to jail. You're probably trying to take the pressure off of yourself because all that information came out. And now that's why you're kind of like leaking this. So I believe it is just dumb. 
It's very and, and if I'm a Republican lawmaker, I'm immediately coming out. We ain't say that. If I'm and if I'm somebody who wants to run for president as a Republican in 2024, I would immediately say, "No, we didn't say that. Nobody's saying that." Like, get in front of the story. What, mm -hmm. what the fuck with y'all. Child, I don't even know. E.C. McLean said, but the Republicans been doing and saying stupid shit all the time. Look at Cruz, et cetera. I mean, That's true. it's true. I just, I don't even, I think she just threw, if it was her or whoever did it, because I don't, part of me, part of me feels like it just doesn't make sense for a Republican benefactor to put this information nope. out there like that. It, it does nothing for them. However, it does scare people who align with Democrats to get out there to, oh, uh -uh, you can't take away abortion, so I'll make sure I'm going to get out there and vote. So I just want people to be very aware of what's going on, and please don't, like now I'm seeing... Niggas is down at every, uh, their local, um, you know, Capitol buildings or city council buildings. Washington, D.C. is flooded this, now this with came, protesters. This I, came out around like 10, 9, 10 last night, um, Eastern time. By the 11 o'clock news, they showed people were at the Capitol. People were at these different buildings protesting. Mm -hmm literally minutes after the news had broke so like comments like come on y'all please please pay attention please stop letting them wag your damn dog please because lately i mean after it's so funny biden gave all this money to ukraine again we had the conversation about student loans and him saying he's reneging it's not reneging <laughs> you ain't it's not what he he said that he's not getting rid of all student loan possibly fifty thousand dollars for some and then something else happened so i just feel like when things like this go down they have to throw something in there to i can see that sidetrack your attention so pay attention to what's going on and what is going to be passed what bills they probably have up on the docket I find it very funny that they're saying the Supreme Court has already voted for this mm -hmm. after Kataji Brown mm -hmm. is initiated. It, it's kind of one of those things like you want, you need a little bit more transparency from everybody. Like who voted for this? And I need names because like, this is why even with certain, you know, and, and obviously we're not implying that Katanji Brown, like Jackson, like voted for this at all. But like, what if she did though? Like, what if she did after all like the praise? Like, what if she's fine with this after the praise that we've given her? And that's why when it comes to this kind of stuff, like, I just, I'm, I don't believe in nobody. I don't get excited about anybody. I don't care if you're black, white, male, woman, nothing. I just don't get excited about nobody anymore. It's just sad because I feel like our system is just so damn broken. I don't think it's the system, honestly. Like this, you think it's the people? I think it's the people because, as far as voters or people in office, voters. Because, like, okay, explain. Because, like, for instance, like Joe Biden. Like, there's nothing that Joe Biden was offering or saying that was out of the norm or different or good. To be honest with you, it was just very regular. Even with student loans, like people keep crying about that. But he, he mm -hmm. it was ten thousand dollars, which. I mean, for me, that'd be a decent dent. But for most people, that's nothing. That ain't doing nothing. So if that happens, how is it that this is the person who's giving the least? This is the person. Uh, oh, they said um, Katanji's not. Um, she she doesn't vote into June, to June or July. But I'm not. What I'm saying. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, just to correct. I'm not trying to correct you guys, but I just want to like validate yeah. saying. What I'm saying about that is she's not the only judge that people get excited about. She's not the only person mm -hmm. in politics that people get excited about. What, I, what I'm saying is that like when these situations happen, we celebrate these people. Kamala Harris is a great example. We celebrate these people. We get excited about them. And then this stuff comes out and we don't know where they stand on it. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that yeah. they vote. I don't even know if it's true that the Supreme Court has done anything with this at all. Yes. Yeah. Like, we don't know if that's a true statement or not. What I'm saying is that when these people that we celebrate, and we did celebrate her, and mostly because she was Black, 
we stuck mm -hmm. with that. And then if it turns out, and we don't like this this new overturn, if this comes out that she was okay with this or is okay with this, that's when I'm like, that's when the people are a problem. And I think yeah. I think people get in their feelings a lot when people say things like that, and it's kind of evident in the comments. But I'm not saying that anybody's dumb or anything like that, but I'm just saying like we're very easy to support these people and, and there's no type of like accountability held because if say right now she comes out and she says like there's no i don't got no issue with this i think it should be overturned then what yes yeah, she doesn't mm -hmm. have to start until the fall like i understand that but if she decides to say that then what do you do like do you take back your praise and stuff like that for her or is it just like oh okay no big deal and that's what we exactly for the longest time it's been like oh okay no big deal it's nothing i can do about that we got to stop defending these people until they show us who they actually are but then on the other side of the coin, do know that people will use this woman. I mean, she could not be for this at all. But because to most of the masses, people really aren't paying attention because E.C. McLean basically just said, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to. I'm sorry, a couple of, Judge Brown does not come on until September. So please, please, please do your research. And although that might be true and maybe she can give her... I guess her word or maybe what she says will count. But even if she's not against it, do know that they will use this woman as a scapegoat for the people who won't sit and educate herself, their selves when it, and we know who that is the Trump base. Well, I hate to say it. That, but like at the same time, it's like, I feel like we come down on the Trump people a lot because like, they're not going to do a lot of research, but no, same is true on the flip side too to be honest with you because mm -hmm. like, at one point Kamala Harris was running for president and people were not interested in her but then she dropped out and now she's the vice president and like that doesn't raise any red flags for anybody like that's okay and and you can't say that it did raise red flags because people were out there with their pearls and their chucks on I don't have any chucks and pearls I don't have an issue with Kamala Harris at all I really just I don't care it is what it is it's just that people to me, don't seem to hold her or Joe Biden accountable. And this is your life that you just are like, oh, okay, no big deal. And, or, and I hate I, the overprotecting of the two of them, too. What? Like, no, as Americans, we are, it is our right to speak on, it's freedom of speech, it's in it. So we have the right to speak on if we don't feel as though these people that we have voted in are not doing a, a, a good job or not living up to the expectation. And I'm so tired of people being able to, like people speaking out about that. And then the people who are, I don't wanna say they're psycho when it comes to this. It's very like Crips and Blood. And it's like, if you step outside of what the gang is about, oh, you're the problem. On both That's not what this, on both sides of the coin. That's not how this should be run. No. I don't think that that's how the comp, and I'm going to say I don't think because I don't have documents sitting right in front of me to verify exactly what I'm saying. But I really don't think that that's what this democracy was created on. No, I, and I think, it, it, and, and I, it doesn't even matter what it was created on, to be honest with you. Like, we're in 2022. Like, this was created decades. Mm -hmm. Things have to evolve. And I think the same energy, and I don't see why anybody would say differently. The same energy that Donald Trump got is what Joe Biden should be getting. When Donald Trump said something stupid, did something stupid, people had no issues calling him out about it. Joe Biden does some of the same stuff. And it's just, like, no big deal. Like, and it's like, I can understand I understand it in a sense of not making fun of him. Like, there's a lot of yeah. things he does that, that, like, let the Republican Party do that. Like, let them make fun of him. Like, okay, I get that. But there are serious things that happen, and people just don't address it. They don't say nothing about it. That's problematic. Like, and that or you get the, or you get the, he's only been in a year. Give it some time. Wow, well, you weren't saying that about Donald Trump. I'm with you. I am 1000% with you on there. It is right on record. I, of course, I can't stand no damn Donald Trump, but I have but, never been. Oh, huh? I think that's okay. I think it's okay. Yeah. I think it's okay to not like Donald Trump and still call him out on his BS. And promises do not happen over, I, I, it went too fast, but promises don't happen overnight. A hundred percent. However, when you make it, when you run like on a campaign and you flat out say, I'm not interested in doing that anymore, that's no longer a promise. At that point, that was a lie. You told a lie. Mm -hmm. He said he's not interested in forgiving any student loans. 
when he ran on forgiving ten thousand dollars. Like that's a thing. Well, let's be clear. Also, we talked about this on a past podcast. That is never what Joe ran well, on. Said, Do you know that he did say ten. He said ten thousand dollars. Okay, so that's about but Elizabeth Warren. Did he run on ten thousand? But he, did he run? He, he ran on that. On ten, Elizabeth Warren, Warren ran on fifty. Yes. And 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 Bernie Sanders ran on a hundred percent. Get it all out of here. <laughs> and then also, like they were saying, like you know, the president can get rid of student loans with a stroke of a pen. Like Elizabeth Warren said that. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to. Upset. It's just a lot. I will we'll just say this when it comes to how we run our business. I just feel like, and we've seen it with all these recent bills that have getting, been getting passed and launched here and there. It's We're good. We got it. We're addressing it. And I hate to put race into it, but there's been so many things when it comes to black people, and I'm just speaking for this country that you guys have said this is what you are going to do in this last election you ran on this where is it it just seems like everybody else is getting taken care of and here we are again holding the shit end of the stick and i for one am just tired of that narrative of give it some time I, I, well all these other policies that i see being passed that shit just happened yesterday and Guess what? It's a law. I think the issue that kind of comes into this stuff is that a lot of this stuff is open to interpretation. So, like, the mm -hmm. see it, someone else may not see it the same way. So, like, while you said, like, oh, nothing was done for, like, African Americans, somebody else who just got, like, a home loan or something like that, that was yeah. African American, they're like, no, he did this. Or, like, with the schools, like, a lot of schools, especially, like, underprivileged schools, they'll say, like, well, the president provided X, Y, Z. And when it came to, like, the COVID stuff, there was a lot of stuff that was provided. But again, it's it's up to interpretation because a lot of people, yeah. but he only did that because he wanted them to go back back to the school. So it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's hard to say like what's being done and what's not being done. It's just overall, like, I just think that we should be more open and accepting of people's criticism of public figures. Yes, I'm um, OG Wisdom, I'm sorry, BTW. Um, he he left the question, and I don't know how long ago it came through, but what do you think of Roe versus Wade? So I think we covered that up in this. Yeah, I mean, I'm a vote to make sure they get to keep it. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel <laughs> like I think, huh? I said, that's probably one of the only things that'll help me go out there, but I really don't want, yeah. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Cause I, you know, it's so funny. I don't think we will have anything to do with it, because didn't they just say a couple of weeks ago the men's is going to have the birth control pill? So if the men's start taking a pill the way they're supposed to be, we shouldn't have no need. Well, not. I, this is joking because we do know there are more needs. You know, we're not, we're excluding rape. We're excluding incest. I'm excluding like I, situational issues like that. But for the most part, men's if you take your pills the way you're supposed to, we probably won't have these issues. I tell you this though, we wouldn't have a Roe versus Wade issue or situation if men could get pregnant. Because if men could get pregnant. And like there could be indications, issues, or nothing like that. We would say like, you know what? Like this is a like I'm not using um, abortions as a contraceptive. This is something that I have to use to make sure that I'm managing my body and stuff like that. Like we would be very like straight line, political with it. It's not even a conversation. Like you leave that alone. Now with women doing it, it's just like all the excuses. It's like the Salem witch trial all over. I just can't imagine being a woman. Like it's just like everything is always like talked about like whether regardless of how you feel about abortion it really doesn't even matter to be honest with you regardless of how you feel it's it's really one of those things where it legit is like attacking women like it's yeah. women have to deal with this no man has to deal with physically having to get it, to get it done no man mm -hmm. has to deal with getting that done only women so like why are we making this a thing like this is kind of crazy to me it's fucking insane. And let's be clear, America is not the only one germane to this. I remember watching a documentary. This was years ago. And they were following people in the bush. Like, so these are people who don't have traditional, like, from what we see, their sense of religion or their relationship with religion. But let me tell you, this one girl, she was out in the village, in the jungle somewhere. She said, me and my husband got five kids already. Uh-uh, let me go in here. So they have things that they know. It's like some type of tree mark. You whip that mark up into an elixir. 
She said, guess what? Okay. Okay. Now, <laughs> so yesterday was, was the Met Gala. Um, yeah. The biggest headline that I've seen coming out of the Met Gala was that Kim Kardashian wore Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Mon sick of them. For, from 60 years ago. What did you think about? And then also the Chloe and Courtney were invited to the Met Gala for the first time. Those are the only headlines that I've really seen from the Met Gala. They were there before though. Yeah. With Diddy. Remember when Diddy did the infamous Diddy Croc? Diddy Croc? Oh no, no, that was like Kendall and or Kylie. Chloe is in Oh Chloe Bailey and no, no, Okay. No, Chloe Kardashian and Courtney Kardashian were never invited. That's what they said, like. Huh? The say first invite? Yeah. And you've been a Kardashian all my life? Yeah. Or I'm not going. I mean, you, you, this is like a, the, the crazy part about it, they had the girl that, I'm with you. If you have a party every year and I never get invited to the party and you invite me this year and I'm on a red carpet and they say, how does it feel to come to your first Met Gala? No. Don't talk to me. You won't do me like that. <laughs> don't get out of my, I, I've been without the Met Gala. I don't know how many years you went invited my sister, Kim, the youngest ones under the me. No, you can keep your invite. I'm good. Thank you, sweetie. Thanks for the invite, but I won't be in attendance. I mean, oh, I'm going to go to the party and get my picture taken or whatever. But don't ask me about this being my first. Like, don't make that a headline that this is my first. That's embarrassing to me. But you know that's what people are, will do. And I feel like somewhat that's like the uh, double entendre or like the the dig. It's like, oh, I'm excited. But you know, when I get to this red carpet, everybody named Mama, oh, so this is your first year. Yeah, Meanwhile, they've been talking about how people have, yesterday was a nobody. All in the, it was one girl they were talking about specifically. Last year, nobody knew who she was. She became a TikTok star all within the same year and is now on the red carpet at the Met Gala. Meanwhile, me and my family, my sister done sold her ass and put it the machine up on so up for the masses to see. We've been holding it down for years on this and these we've been keeping the blogs, the foot on the blogs. Next. <laughs> yeah. And this is I guess everybody wants to so. keep up with the Kardashians. <laughs> I guess they said, well, I guess y'all can come. Guess it's time. Ain't nobody else coming, but here, you come on. Now, what did you notice? So somebody mentioned, uh, Ron Diva says, Lori Harvey did that outfit. She looked amazing. Overall, I thought the majority of fashions were insane. Alicia Keys just wearing her homage to, to New York City. Um, who else? Harry, not Harry Styles, Shawn Mendes. So I think for me, because the theme this year was um, the Gilded Age, but then there was another theme with it, like American, what is it, like American I'm watching wrestling. royalty. I don't know about this stuff. I literally was watching wrestling while it was on. I knew I was going to have to talk about it, so I just told my wife to just to show me people who look nice or whatever so I can have something to talk about. I don't know. I do not know. Okay, so for the men's, who did you like them from what you saw? Did you like anybody that stood out? Future looked cool. Like I like I like his little he had oh. words. Like Future, he was there. Who the hell on that carpet? <laughs> he had a, like shorts. He had, like a tux, like a blazer suit, and he had like shorts with it, which I thought was cool. Swiss y'all stop. Y'all really invite a future to things? Y'all just want him to impregnate everybody, now, don't y'all? Now imagine being Chloe Kardashian and seeing Future there. Well, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> In future, like, you know, this ain't my first year. I've been here before. Welcome. I've been here. The Kardashians looked a hot ass mess from from Dat zero four one seven. Yeah, I didn't even. It wasn't cohesive. I feel like in the past, like they would at least try to be cohesive with their looks. I feel like it wasn't much of that. But I think they were just so happy to be there for the simple fact that they chose to ditch out on court because they knew China wasn't cashing out on a hundred thousand dollars or nothing from them, we, <laughs> or what a hundred million dollars or nothing. Should we move into that? Let you, yes. Really, what else are we going to say about the Met? The fashions, for the most part, were amazing. I felt an interesting trim. We saw a lot of men with nail polish on. At, I guess it? this men, the men's in the nail polish. What is that? It's trending, like the lines of sexuality. It it doesn't matter, and everybody just. Do what you do and love what you love and subscribe to whatever you want to subscribe to. So men's, it is okay. 
get your cup, coordinate your, um, your, 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 your nail polishes with your outfits. If you want to couple nails painted, couple nails, not it's okay. So just do your, well, I mean, look, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. I, I, I just don't get it. Like, I don't, it's, like I my issue was when this when this spills over into the real world. So I'm back in the dating realm. Well, there are guys who do that. Let's just say this: if I show up probably to a date and give manicure or like you got, and there were men with acrylic on last night too. You know I'm saying? like I, like I'm okay with people getting like their fingernails painted clear. Like that's like whatever. That's like normal. But these guys are with like like. If you're into it, you're into it. At the end of the day, you can't be mad as a man if you show up on a date with a girl or or oh God, I can't even oh, but can't. say it because this is the day the day we're in. If she is not into you presenting yourself a certain way, and she's not in, or a guy is not into you having nail polish on, please don't make it seem like that person is the issue. I don't know, Toy, because the way things are going now, though, like things are more acceptable. So, like, if you are the one who has that issue with the person doing that, it's less about them and more about you now. No. You can never you can never push on anything what I'm comfortable or acceptable with. Yep. Now, if you want to do that, lead your life that way, feel free but, to do it. But I don't have to be accepting of it but, in my personal space. But that's about you, though. Like, that's... I mean... The yeah, way and I have a choice of who I'm going to date, and I prefer us not to have acrylic nails on together. Girl 130 said, get it out there. Because I was trying to really get that point across. Uh, one th are you, were you born, is that a one or? Yeah, were you born January 30th? That means you're an Aquarius. Uh, so y'all the same? <laughs> <laughs> the, the way society works now, though, if a woman went on a date with a man and he had his nails painted and she was like, oh, I got an issue with that, she really would be looked at as the one that's like, you're not progressive. Like, you, something's wrong with you. I personally think it's a, bit much to paint your face. Yeah. I don't, I think there are some things that I'm okay with just leaving to the women and like painting fingernails, like I'm a fine with, like that's y'all thing, like let y'all have that like we don't need Yeah. and if you want to do it, that is great, like do it, be great but you can't be mad because you decided to date somebody and it's just something like that's you know what they love, it's my preference it's what it is <laughs> You can't be mad that this person that you're dating is not into it. And it's okay. Maybe later on down the line, it won't be that big of a deal. Because remember at the time, it wasn't common for men to have both of their ears pierced. Yeah. Maybe in the beginning, it, it, was a, 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 it was okay. Some things I think are silly. Like when you be like, an uh, ear piercing is for uh, only girls. Like that's ridiculous. A nose piercing is uh -huh. only girls. That's ridiculous. I really don't even, if guys want to paint, pierce their belly buttons like that's that's uh, whatever like that's what you want to do what you want to do it's just some stuff like just leave it to the other sex like come on yeah I'm, well we can't say that because now we're in a space of the way they're trying to spend it ain't gonna be no sex you subscribe to we what is it we the shem like so like like gender neutral like a more gender neutral yeah. society. i'm fine with that i guess it's just I just say to each their own. If that's what you subscribe to, that is fine. Be it yes. But see, be I free. Agree, though, with Nona Britton Seven, because she said you like what you like, and you and you don't like what you don't like. That's never the case anymore, though, and that's the reason why these things become hot topics. Because yes, you like what you like, and it's okay to like what you like. But then when you start to make a comment or start to have a feeling about what you don't like, that's when people are giving you the side eye and calling you a bigot and like saying negative things about you because you're not allowed really to not like anything. Like that's why this is an issue. And that's why it's just scary because more and more we see it. Well, actually there have been cases lately that have been coming out. Um, and I actually meant to bring this up a few weeks ago, but I know there was a teacher um, I can't, I'm sorry, this, the full details of the story evade me, but there was a teacher who won a lawsuit suit against the school that yeah. he worked for because there was a, one of those gender, a gender neutral student there. Um, the student was born a male, subscribed, identified as female, and the teacher referred to the student as a male.
the student yeah. goes to the teacher and say, hey, I identify as a woman, but the teacher basically said that's neither here nor there for you to stop me from saying that you are infringing on my uh, my rights as a Christian, so to speak. That, but that portion of it, though, like when, when the teacher brought the religion into it, that's when it kind of it kind of came one of those things like this is actually a case because then yeah. you really are trying to tell a person how to like like how to uh, what to believe in what to subscribe to pretty much what's what's okay in their comfort zone i'm with ec mclean like you know people are entitled to do what they want but like in a little bit what you're saying too toy like you are entitled to do what you want but i'm also entitled to not be okay with certain things. I don't necessarily have to tell you. I don't have to tell you, and I think that's one of the things we have to work on. I don't have to tell you that I don't like it, but I also don't have to be okay with it either. You you don't, and you you shouldn't be vilified for it either, so to speak. Uh, for instance, I remember there was this this guy I worked with years ago, and I'll, for some reason, this instance sticks in my brain. This guy did not subscribe to God. In his opinion, there is no God. Everything happens the way it happens. For you know, instance, his background, his both of his parents were scientists, like big into it. So I guess that's for one of the reasons why he didn't believe it. I hate when people bring these situations up in public settings and it was a work setting. And even though I personally didn't subscribe to that, yes, of course, for me, I know it was a God. I know there's a God. And that's just from my own personal experience because I know there's things that I've been through in my own life that I would never have gotten through it if it wasn't for my faith and the above. But I, what I did not like is how people just like, vilified him and dragged this boy and it just like y'all brought it up in the conference room or like the break room or wherever we are but or wherever we were at the moment but for y'all to just drag this boy like that i just didn't think that that was right and i look at it for people like that like maybe he just doesn't have have he hasn't developed that relationship with him or maybe he hasn't gone through enough in his life to where he seemed like I have to turn to God and maybe he doesn't have a real testament but I just don't think that people should should totally vilify somebody because their views on life disagree with what you put out there like why why are we not in a space where like you can agree to disagree yeah. Like, I don't want to stop you from living your life, but you I don't want you to impose your stuff fully on me if I really don't subscribe to it. I, I just feel like people so much want to make these these big like um, Supreme Court cases. But a lot of it doesn't have to be if we can just agree to disagree, right. but let people live at the same time. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I, I think that's enough for there. I don't. I don't want to drag that issue out. Yes, I. Uh, huh. I agree. All right. Um. Let's see. Well, we can get into this one story. I had a few local stories about jail, but um, did you hear this latest story about in Alabama? There's a woman. Her name is Vicky Wright. There's a warrant out for her arrest. Um for helping a an, a, 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 a prisoner. Mm -hmm. Ironically, they have the same name. Her name is Vicki White. His name is... I don't know. His last name uh, is White. So at first, I thought, like, well, maybe they had a, a relationship or maybe their family. Child, Vicki done got this damn prisoner said, all right, I'm going to take him for a mental evaluation. Hours later, people realize, well, where they at? Because they ain't come back. Come to find out there wasn't no mental evaluation that was scheduled for that day. The day that Vicky and this dude disappeared, ironically, this was supposed to be her last day to work of work because she put her retirement in. Yeah. People are saying that they're not, they don't, they don't know if there was a, uh, a, a romantic relationship there, but they're not counting it out. But right now, it's been since the weekend, she helped this man bust out of prison, and they've just been living there, their lives ever since. The people can't find them. Now, mind you, this, this man, 
he went to jail for prison for a, a lot of other uh, crimes, but primarily for murder. Hmm. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that. I saw, like, so yesterday I have a friend who lives in California now, and like, he's local. He lived locally, he moved to California. And we were texting yesterday, and he was like, I'm really homesick. Like, I miss being home. So I went to 6ABC, right? And I screenshot, like, the first couple stories I saw and just circled them. And I'm like, you sure you missed this? That was the top story in Philadelphia. That story was the top story in Philadelphia on 6ABC yesterday. And I sent it to him, and I'm like, you sure you miss it here? Because it's a mess over here. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. You know, when it comes to stuff, we tell people all the time, you don't let nothing get in the way. Nothing. Of your love and the love that God puts in front of you. Do you really think this had God had nothing to do with this? Our both of our last names are white, so we're basically married in His eyes anyway. You gotta change your name. So look, you, I think we before we said it because we were talking about portion. We said don't let a ring get in the way of your happiness. Mm -mm. I think we need to increase it. Don't let a ring or a jail cell or a murder case get in the way of your happiness. And, and, and your job, too. Don't let them do that to you. So what you work there. God saw fit for this day. Do you think it's just... God that I was talking about. A different one. <laughs> saw fit for y'all to do that. For sure. Well, her God says, said, y'all don't see that this ain't a coincidence? You don't let... Don't let no job. Don't let no possible prison sentence. Don't let even your possible future murder up from the love of your life. Because God knows we don't even know if this woman is still alive. You're dealing with a murderer here. Imagine, could you imagine retiring from the prison system as an employee and going back as a prisoner? Like, that is about to be the trajectory of your life. Insane. <laughs> and, you know, I, people always say, like, guys in prison can talk the panties off of a woman. And clearly, they was telling the truth. I guess all girl just ate everything up. What is going on? I guess the dating apps wasn't working it. She said, uh -uh. Well, "Why would I need a Why would I need a dating app? And I, I could just swipe left and right from the cells in here. <laughs> all these single men sitting here, all of them. And you want me to get on some app? And I get it because I just recently got back into these dating apps. Well, one in particular." Off of the not suggested of a friend, I had to ask a friend, like, well, what apps are you using? A guy friend, and he told me, so I went on. I could see why she said, I'm a <laughs> <laughs> prison bays were more in, uh, more eligible than than at bay because <laughs> I know where he at and going. No, he ain't go where you going? It's me and you. Yeah, she was probably dating that man for quite some time, and he was probably just going along with it because he knew that he was getting out of jail because she was dumb. Yes, you know she was. They was talking, planning. Well, you know I put in my retirement. So no, he this told is her to do it. Yeah. He said, this is the plan. We're going to run away together. So you retire. That way they won't be looking for you or nothing like that, and then we're going to bust out of here, and we're going to live happily ever after. That man has not seen that lady. He When they got home, he's like, you got a car? She's like, yeah, I got a car. <laughs> Like, give me the keys. I'm going to go get us some dinner tonight. He, she's like, where are you going? I'm, he's like, I'm going to go to Red Lobster. She's like, oh, I love Red Lobster. So Because you like the Cheddar Bay Biscuits. You told me about it when I was, you know, when I was behind bars and we sat for hours yeah. talking about Favorite it. Favorite meal before he went in. So he wanted to recreate that. So he got in the car and then she was sitting at home. She took a nice shower and come <laughs> out or whatever. She was ready because she already knew what was about to go down. That man never came back home. So she's sitting there waiting. <laughs> What? I'm sitting here waiting and calling him. Why you won't pick up the cop? You ain't watching the news. But honestly, for real, I pray that this woman is okay. So I don't waste prayers. You, you know what? You're right. You're right. I just don't want nobody to die over no damn foolishness. Like, I, I just don't understand her. This man is in prison for murder. We're not talking about a bank robbery here or there. We ain't talking about selling <laughs> drugs. I don't even care if it was a jaywalking ticket. If you bust somebody out of jail, what you get is what you get. That's it. It's just ten times worse because you busted out a murderer. Like You get no prayers from me. Not one. I, I oh. people that y'all come in contact with because those people don't deserve whatever comes to them, if anything. You, well... 
got Allie Kipper said this is going to be a lifetime story advertised on the channels and Allie Kipper I'll be right there on my Saturday night premiere look at this dummy what you do <laughs> yeah and, and you know um, EC McLean is right you definitely didn't get your check yet you did no. get your check oh god she probably had investments or something no, I'm gonna hold it no she did that woman's stupid she didn't have nothing so Nona Britton said she believes he's innocent. Yeah, and that's why she ain't the paperwork. And that's why she might not ask him. She's still sitting at home waiting for him to return. That man is going to live his old life with his old girlfriend. He was talking to his girlfriend while she was there, talking about some this dummy. As soon as I get out here, I'm coming right back to you and the kids. And that's where he's at. I'm just gonna need them. Can y'all please? Because you know I subscribe to um, and I'm a, a freaking watcher of Love After Lockup. Can we get? Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Now, I don't know if Protective Styles by ease. And to my story of this is true, but she said that she sold her house and got a 90K profit, 95K profit. We live in. We're going to Mexico. I'm going to drive the car. Oh, I love We'll catch a plane <laughs> somewhere else once we get to Mexico. They live in. But that $90, that's going to, that 95, that don't go but too far. Toya, this man is, he, he's living off that money himself. She's not yes. getting any. She's done. That woman is sitting at home talking about but that's, what I, but that's what I'm saying. Either way, it ain't going to last for so long. So, girl, <laughs> enjoy your time. But you're going to jail. Actually, as a matter of fact, that woman is right now at home. She she's finally got up from the shower that she took because she realized he may not be coming back. She put in the application to go back to work at the prison system because you need, you can't be retired no more. You need a job. <laughs> well, she might be ward leader. That might be good for her in prison because being that she knows like the workings of the system, she can keep the other inmates in check. Like she can give everybody like some some insight on how things really work because it's always good to have that knowledge of what goes on behind the scenes and and. While you're there, and they're gonna put Pinnacle the Girl Thirty Set for my man. <laughs> the next time they're gonna put her on the women's side. You work with the women. You can't work with the men. You lost those privileges. <laughs> now she's gonna be sitting there right with the women, and they're gonna be sitting in jail with the women. They're gonna be like, "Bitch, I know you ain't gonna. You better got all a plan to get us out." <laughs> <laughs> she gonna say, "You know what? It's never too late in life to try something new." <laughs> And I hope she like women's because you know them them girls on that side. They well, you know, when I, we did hear the stories. They are letting the trans with the peens dangling. Okay, Toya, I think and the women's one the I think I think so. So she might be good, depending on the prison, depending on the inmate. She might be good to go. But you never find. But but hopefully that man's that man comes back to her because you never replace your first love. You replace your what? You never replace your first love. <laughs> I wonder if she they ain't said nothing about her Mary because the last one that I saw that they did this for the woman had a whole fucking husband at home and kids and they was like Maybe, I don't know why. Want something new? Like you don't got no stories about you fighting in the bars. Like I don't get ever see you beat up nobody in the prison. Like I want something new. You ain't got no scars on your face. You ain't got no tear drop under your eye. Like so what? What are we doing? They said she the new uh, Jay Z and Beyonce on the run. <laughs> they, they lady getting tuned up. <laughs> well, I hope it was worth it because you're going to jail. <laughs> you are going to jail. Ladies, can y'all stop doing this? I ain't never run into no peen yet that done made me. <laughs> I ain't never found it, and I, if it exists, I guess apparently it does. I don't want none of that peen. The one that really made me consider. I might do some jail time for this one. I, I'll be good with it, because I know he's going to be loyal. Please stop. Stop. Th this ain't it. <laughs> it's one thing to date somebody in prison. Like, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But to break them out? Uh, it's too much. Oh, really quickly before we go, uh, three more stories that I wanted to touch on. So, no, don't fret, my pet. Um, if you guys are worried about the the abortion, uh, the Roe versus Wade being Wade being repealed, Jeff Bezos, Amazon, are uh, wild. Our 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 fearless leader in packages 
has said no worries because if you can't get your abortions here in the states or any other non-life threatening um procedures that need to be done jeff gonna get about four thousand dollars to fly out wherever y'all need to fly to to get it taken care of um i don't know what you're feeling about that but look I, I get it. I feel like we all like heard the news and we all wanted to act like hastily with it. If you want to say something really quickly, you want to like, you know, voice your opinion, your support, for, or whatever, how you feel. Maybe let's just wait a minute before we start saying things out loud. You sound crazy. You're like, Jeff, just stop. Get on your damn spaceship or your billion dollar yacht and just chill. Stop. Ain't nobody asking for all this. Um, Don Lemon, he has finally been... Uh, justified oh i guess you would call it justified so to speak well i don't know if justified is a word <laughs> like i don't know if that's a real word justified. well just, justified let me like I mean, it's out of context but like he's cleared his name his name has been cleared he is cleared of the sex assault case that uh he recently had it's been going in the news all this year mm -hmm where the assailant said um, on the night of the night of in question that Don, I guess he didn't say he was drunk or enamored or, you know, under the influence or anything, but from his recollection, uh, Don Lemon aggressively grabbed him, shoved him Don Lemon hands up in his crotch was, you know, getting them balls together like this, you know, playing with them, pulled them out of his pants and then shove them in his face. You can't even see. I was trying to put it in your face, Dex. So. We're good on that. So oh, you can smell it, but you can't. Word correctly. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, what ended up happening? Is Don Lemon in trouble? Like, what happened? So, no, the guy said he basically, um, the, the case is now acquit like gone. Well, uh, the guy said that he um, misremembered mis what happened that night. Misremembered. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it didn't happen that way after all. So we're just going to drop the case. <laughs> now, the word you use, justified, let me use that word for you real quick. If Don Lemon caught this man on the street and he punched him in his face, he'll be justified in doing that. That is ridiculous. You cannot make up some story like that. And then when you're, for whatever reason, you decide to say, like, oh, no, like, I'm going to drop it. You can't say you misremembered. I feel like I need to be in jail. If you misremember something like that, like a serious accusation like that, go to jail. I misremembered, a.k.a. the check cleared. Okay, but say we settled out of court. Misremembered? And that's the crazy thing, because this is when we get into when people not, not believing victims. When you hear stuff like this over and over and over again, to sit there and he was quoted as saying, I misremembered. Insane. And we're just supposed to expect it to be like, all right, cool. And this Me Too movement we have, we've been in for the past since 2020 or 2019, everything that's been happening with, you know, you got to believe women, protect women or protect people. Don't victim shame. And ish like this happens. I mean, you still shouldn't victim shame, but you also shouldn't lie either. Like, what are you lying? Thank you. Thank you. But according to, I mean, I don't know. This, this is, everybody just be safe out there. Please but, act accordingly. And there's no consequences. There's no consequences for this guy's actions, and that's a problem. Angela mm -hmm. number thirty eight just um, joined the chat from Arkansas. Yes. Hey, Angela, baby, it's good to see you on. And then the last thing of the night, we will and we'll be done with this quick. All right, we're making pretty good timing. Um, Karen, there's another Karen debate recently. Um, a woman named Emily Swaven. Mm -hmm. She took to Twitter, I believe, and she uh, made a post saying that people really need to stop saying the word Karen. In this oh. day and age, it's been, it says misogyny, patriarchy, and it's, and actually misogyny and patriarchy has been here much longer since rape, 
than racism has been. So really, she just wants to, um, the word is sexist and racist. Um, it doesn't allow uh, for women uh, to be defended and, and speak up for themselves. And really, she would just like for people to stop saying Karen and the N-word. I suggest that we change the name from Karen to Emily. <laughs> I'll tell you. Let's call it Emily now Since you feel so vocal To put that BS <laughs> You want to be, huh? It's insane that you say BS Because that was definitely my BS report for tonight Like I thought I was like oh people aren't going to believe this is true that, Oh you stole it um, But you know what's crazy ironically I, I don't disagree she is, she is right I mean if you think about it The way people I've never used the word Karen before But the way people like started with it, it got kind of like aggressive. Like it was, it's kind of scary actually the way people would like call these women Karen and stuff like that. Like it's, it's kind of like a word that like, I can, I put it this way. Hearing the word and hearing how people use the word Karen, I can imagine how someone felt decades ago being called the N word. Cause it just like Karen kind of cuts a little bit. Like I like Karen feels like don't be a Karen. <laughs> oh. Just don't 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 do it. But the thing is though, Karen kind of became like a, it wasn't what you did. It was just the color of your skin. Like Karen is really like a color of your skin kind of. Well, no, we're not going to say that because Karen color of your skin has partly to do with it. But no, it's more so about entitlement. Sweet, like, and you, you know, but the thing is though, like you could a white woman can complain about literally anything and we're immediately gonna call this woman a cat. And like it's kind of you gotta admit, the way the word Karen is used is nasty. Like people are very about the word. Like it's and granted, some of these women do things that are really ridiculous or whatever, and you would say that they're being ridiculous, but like if a white woman complained about almost anything, they would start calling her Karen in a way that it's just kind of like, oh, God, like, that, it kind of hurts. Like, y'all really going in on this woman calling her? I don't know. I, I look, I can see how that could hurt somebody's feelings. I really do. I, I kind of... I can see, but we are not going to compare this to generations and eons of the oh, of comparing this to the n-word we, we're not going to do that maybe later on down the line but see where this karen see where this karen ship goes maybe later on down the line you do have that but let me just relate this debate to the met gala right yes go the n-word is future i've been here i'm always here i'm i still <laughs> that gala Karen is that TikTok girl. Like, okay, like I just came up on the scene, but I'm already at the top of the list. Like, I'm already on the red carpet. I'm that girl. Yeah. Karen is a nasty word. I'm telling you, like, Karen really is the N word. Like, I don't care what nobody says. Like, you, the power that we've given that word, and the look at her. The like, Karen makes my breakdown in tears. Calling like. Karen is the N word. It really is the N word. Like it is crazy. And honestly, I think they'd be more offended by being called a Karen than some of us get called be if we were called the N word. Like the N word is something that is terrible. It's horrible or whatever. Yeah. It's been around for quite some time, and we know the origins of it. Some people were actually there for the origins, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Karen, you know the origins of it, and it's directly created to insult you. There is no, like, we taking this word back. We're going to change it around. Like, we are saying this word because we want to hurt your feelings. Becky's the yeah. same way. Becky's like. Well, Becky wants Becky with the good hair. And let's be clear with that. Huh? No, no. No, no, no. Oh, with the butts. I like big butts. No, no, no. What, what was it? Becky was a whore. Becky was a slut. Becky's a white girl who is a slut and a whore. Like, look at, look, listen to plies with Miss Becky. Please stand up. I need that good Becky. Like, Becky was never. So why are they mad about that as much? What, what's the Karen that give you? you? Like, whatever. Like, you know, and then Beyonce repurposed it with Becky with the good hair. Ain't nobody yeah. purpose Karen. Like, they took Becky back. Like, being called that is not like, I was like, oh, whatever. You think I'm hot, girl, whatever. Yeah, because they were like, oh, I'm Becky yeah. with the good hair. But it still wasn't a, net, a positive connotation behind it, even with Beyonce remixing it. So rather you caught that or not. It's like, whatever. Karen, though, come on, call us like Karen is nasty. <laughs> like, that is, like, that is nasty. Karen's, Karen's a nice 
okay. Um, Dad zero four seventeen said Karen is a nice thing. They could be called something worse. Yeah. Okay, but think about this. Think about this. You won't <gasps> call me the B word. You won't call me an a hole. You won't call me a Karen. Like it's like Karen has taken over every curse word. Like you can't like when you you would think the B word and a hole ridiculous yeah. words will be worse than Karen. Karen has taken over those words. I'm telling y'all, like Karen is worse than being called the B word. It's so funny because I feel like Karen put race aside. I feel like more of a Karen is more of you. But you always got something to complain about. What? Nobody else in the room has any issue about what's going on. And here come your ass with your Karen, John and Kate plus eight haircut. And you say, I want to speak to a manager. You get no, 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 you have an issue, but a Karen. <laughs> I, I, okay, now think about it like this. Think about it like from a white woman's perspective, too. They Alan, Alan Kipper said, I think you're giving the name too much power, but go ahead. <laughs> That's what we did. I'm telling you, that's what it, that's what she's doing. That's how that's how I view the N word too. Like I feel like we give it too much power. I really do. Yeah. But like I look at it like, just imagine you're like a white woman and you're like, oh, this woman's being ridiculous. Stop being a Karen. Like white women call other white women Karens, right? They do. Th that's so your issue was with them. I'm gonna say mama business. Yes. But then that same white woman could just be in the grocery store and be like, oh my God, they don't have this and the third. And somebody's gonna call her Karen. So you know how, well, you know what you meant when you called that one lady a Karen. You knew that. Now you can turn around being called the same thing just because of the color of your skin and your sex. What they say? If it, what they say? Wait, what? If it doesn't apply, let it fly. <laughs> but you, you can't, you can't. It's just, I don't know, okay. Well, are, are, ma'am, but are, could you possibly have a case of the Karens? Possibly? No. Just, just I just get treated terribly. <laughs> I, um, no. Ellie Kipper says, um, there's women of all races who will raise hell. Y'all don't call no black woman no Karen. You don't do that. And she'd be complaining no. for the manager, too. I think you can. It says, so we're going to redetermine the lines, no. redraw the lines of Karenism. No. Karen be anybody. No, 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 no. We're not this is not our job to repurpose that word. That is that's y'all responsibility. You gotta do So the people who take issue with it, you repurpose the word for what Stop giving them what you feel comfortable with or don't subscribe to it at all. Stop giving these people it look if you are offended by this word, you gotta handle it on your own. Like why we because there was no white woman saying like this is how you repurpose the N word. So don't do that. You can't give these people you look, you want your own baby thing. <laughs> figure it out figure it out but at the end of the day you ain't gonna get no sympathy from me i'm sorry figure it the hell out stop taking it personal get out your feelings long ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god stop living in 2020 stop <laughs> Stop living in the past. It only has power if you give it power. You say live your life. Y'all say it all the time. Why can't we say it? Okay, let me stop. That's terrible. Okay, it's time to go. Everybody, have an amazing night. You can catch which I you know I get so excited on Tuesday nights because our boy Dex is on with not industry friends, bro talk live, 10 o'clock tonight. Facebook Live, you can catch it on the best. Late night talk show on these internet streets. So make sure you check that out. Tomorrow, Wednesday, you can check out a um, new episode of Patty and the Millennials. You can find oh, that. Oh, wait, just real quick. The Patty and the Millennials episode, it was about like happiness and what you do to like to like maintain your happiness. I am uh -huh. podcast being so ridiculous, guys. So I apologize in advance. <laughs> <laughs> you have to turn up for the moment. I said something so crazy and out of character. Like I can't believe I said that. Patty was like, now you got now you really gonna make us go ahead and no, listen to this Patty episode. Was in her mind when I said it. I, I, my cheeks, like how it is now. Like I, I could, I'm, I can't believe I said that. But yeah, you got oh. that podcast tomorrow. It is insane. <laughs> yeah, so you will catch that podcast tomorrow. Um, uh, you'll see it up, and it can be found on everywhere podcasts can be found on. So. Um, and then Industry Friends, we're always talking about that. New episodes are out. No, they're coming soon, though. All right. A new episode's coming soon, and they can be found pretty much on anywhere you can find podcasts. Yes. All right. Industry Friends, our – should we announce the name at next, least that we have? Next week, guys, we have 
Toy and I are doing a podcast. We can tell you that. Yeah. And next week we are announcing everything that goes with it. Like we're it, it, we have some news next week about our podcast. Yeah. We're really excited. Yes. Yeah. We're super excited. Also, next week, we will have on a guest. She is the owner of Cadence in the Clouds, which is a local music series um, highlighting Philadelphia local artists and local businesses. So we will have her on. The event is next Friday. Um, so if you guys aren't busy, you should come out. It's for an amazing cause. Um, again, supporting local talent. The <laughs> The, the show is freaking amazing. I'd be like, the show was only twenty five dollars. You get food, you get alcohol, you get great networking opportunities, like really solid people in the room without feeling like a networking event. And you listen to good music. Come on out, treat yourself next Saturday, next Friday. So we will have Cadence in the Clouds on with us next on on Monday. Okay. So thank you guys so much for joining. And um, thank you for being amazing. YouTubers, if you haven't subscribed to us, please subscribe to us, our IG followers. Go and take a look at the YouTube, which you can find me under, I guess, Chocolate Divinity or LaToya Charleston, either way, you can find it there. We may be moving homes later, but we'll figure all of that out later on. But thank you so much for supporting, and we will see you next week. Bye, everybody. We love you. <laughs>